absolute value functions or sometimes we call it as modulus functions. So imagine this is a scenario where grandma asking you that how far is your house? If your answer is, hey, it's negative 2.5 km away from yours. So grandma will give you a lot of the question mark in her eyes. Why is it? Because of the negative sign. In real life, it's very rare for us to use negative sign or negative numbers. So it's better for you to just say that your house is 2.5 km away from hers. So how can we do that? How is it be possible from a negative numbers we convert to become a positive numbers? So this is why we're going to learn absolute value function today. As we know, vector quantity have two components. The first one is the directions and the second one is the magnitude. For example, when we say that 2 meter to the left, usually we use a negative sign to indicate that is at the left hand side. So what if now I'm only curious about the distance and not the directions? We can apply modulus functions where it represents by two vertical bar, one at the left, one at the right. And this is how we can get rid of the directions and change our vector quantity to become something called scalar quantity, where direction is no longer our interest. So once we apply the absolute value functions, we will change the negative to become positive. So basically, absolute value functions is just tell us that how far are you from the numbers instead of the direction. We are just asking like how far are you from a certain point. So let's see another scenario again. So here we have Ali, Akau, and Mutu. So if I ask you that how far is Ali from Akau? So although we will always assume that left hand side is negative 2 meter, but if we apply the modulus functions by using the two vertical bar, it will change to become positive number. So it would be better if we say that Ali is 2 meter away from Akau. So same thing here, if I ask you that how far is Mutu from Akau? But since this one is served, it's really a positive 2 meter, so there is no changes after we apply the modulus functions. So this is what we mean by absolute value functions, where we get rid of the directions and only take care about the magnitude. So just a recap, whenever you see a negative number inside a modulus functions, we will just assume this one become the positive number because why? We are only interested like how far are you from a certain point. Let's play a game now. Let's say this game is guess the number. In my mind, I have the number of 80. But what happened here is you guess it as 75. And I know 75 is 5 lower than my answer. So I will say that your guess is eventually negative 5 because it's lower, right? But what if now I apply the modulus functions? So once we apply the modulus functions, the negative become positive. But what do they mean? So eventually it means that I no longer tell you that it's 5 lower or 5 higher. Instead, the modulus function will just tell us that how far are you from the accurate answer? Same thing here, if your guess is 85, I know it's 5 above from my answer. But if I apply the modular sign, then I will say that your answer is eventually 5 away from my answer. Instead of telling you that it's above or lower, modulus function will tell you that how far is it from the point. So let us see that how can we plot these absolute value functions. But before this, we're going to look at the graph of y is equals to x. So let us plot it, this one from negative 5 to 6 as the domain. It means that we are only interested to see the graph in this kind of range. So how do we plot? It's very easy. We make a table and we're going to choose three value, 2 to 3 value of x. So for me, I choose the lowest, the highest, and something in the middle that is easy. Let's say I choose 0. So after I choose it, 
I just need to substitute into the equations. So how do I substitute? Since we know the equation is y is equal to x, so I want to ask, what is our y when x is equal to negative 5? Ah, we know it's negative 5 as well. How about 0? So same thing, we just need to substitute, we get 0, and so on. So once we substitute in, we can find our y value. So once we plot it in, we know that this pair of x and y will just give us the coordinate. So we just need to plot the graph based on the coordinate given here. So the first one, negative 5, negative 5, 0, 0, and 6, 6. So once we get everything plot up, we can just connect the point by using a straight line. So this is the graph of y is equals to x. But what we are curious is, what if now I want to apply the modulus function for this case? Hmm. So how do we apply? So we try to apply it now. So I just speed up everything. So now our function is y is equals to modulus x. So we put all the x value into the modulus sign. As we know, modulus is not going to take care of the directions. So all of the negative will now become a positive numbers. So this is why I will have 5, 0, and 6 now. So as usual, these three variables will give me the coordinate. I will just based on the coordinate plot it one more time again. So now I will have negative 5, 5, 0, 0, and 6. And if I connect it by using a straight line, I will have something like a V shape. So let me plot it now. So the pink color represents the new graph. And as we can see, it becomes the V shape. So what do you realize? So eventually, if you put a modular sign, if we convert whatever that is below the x-axis and reflect it to become positive numbers. So basically, it's a reflection in the x-axis. So x-axis is just act like a mirror. So we can see one more time again. So this is eventually the graph of y is equals to x. So what happened when we apply it to become a modular sign? So when we apply x axis, we act like a mirror. So it's supposed to be a straight line. But what happened is when we apply the modular sign, the x axis will act like a mirror. So it will be going like a V shape. So this thing is like a hinge. This thing will act like a hinge. Okay? So we see it for one last time. This is the graph of y is equal to x. And we know this is the hinge and x axis will act like a mirror. So it will now reflect it up. This is how we apply the absolute value function and this is how we draw the graph. This is the hinge. So how we can refine the hinge is very easy. We just need to put whatever inside the vertical bar to become zero. For this case, x is equal to zero. So we know this is the hinge. So what if now I say x minus 2? So in order to find the hinge, what should we do? We just need to put everything inside the, hinge, the vertical bar to become 0. So x minus 2 is equal to 0. x is equal to 2. So we know the hinge now is located at the location x is equivalent to 2. So this is why we get the hinge is at 2. So this is the transformations when we alter it by plus or minus the x value. So what if now I want to do something like plus 1? So this plus 1 is eventually directly plus the y value by 1. So this is what we call as the y shift. So if you plus 1 to the y value, the graph will shift up by 1 unit. So as you guess, if now it's a minus 1, then we shift the graph to the lower portion by one unit as well. So this is how we do the y shift. But what if now I increase the coefficient of x? So if I increase the coefficient of x, do you realize anything happened? Yes, the graph is getting narrow. So it means that when the coefficient is higher, the graph is narrow. Meanwhile, when the coefficient of x is smaller, 
the graph is wider. So it means that if now I have 0.1x, I will have the graph something like this, which is wider. But the V shape is always there. That's why I put the piece signed to represent the absolute value functions. So let's have a recap now. How can we transform our modulus graph? So whatever attached to the x is controlling the width. Where when we have a higher value, it is a little bit narrow. When we have a lower value, we give us something that is wider. How about the b here? So whenever we affect the x value, they're going to give us the x shift. So you can imagine x shift when we want to plus, we move to left hand side. When we want to minus, it's going to be right hand side. It's the opposite of it. Why is it? Because we have a tendency to always stay in balance. So imagine x is your marks in the exam when your teachers accidentally minus 5 marks away from your exam, you will argue and try to fight for it, right? So it means that our hinge is now located at the 5 because we try to add 5 marks by our surf. So this is what we mean by X shift. Meanwhile, if your teacher just accidentally plus 5 marks away from your exam, so I know you are very honest, if the 5 marks is not belongs to yours, you will go to tell your teachers, hey, it is wrong. You're supposed to minus 5 marks. So minus, that's why you go to the left hand side. So this is how it works in the X shift. Meanwhile, for the Y shift, it's very straightforward because the Y shift is controlling the Y value. So if positive, go up, negative, go down. It's very straightforward. So once again, we have our grandma here. Grandma said, mm hmm, I'm just staying two floors away from your house. So imagine now you are living in a condominium. Since this statement from grandma is staying away, so she don't tell you that it's either above or below. So we know away is represented by eventually the modulus signed. And something that we don't know, we use unknown to represent it. So we know the unknown of the modulus, uh, the modulus of this unknown is equal to 2. So just remember that whenever we have an unknown inside a modulus functions, we always have two scenarios where the first scenario is a positive and the second scenario is a negative one. So for this case, it's either two floor above or two floor below. Let's explore more. So now we have a of x is equivalent to the modulus function of x minus 2. So first thing first, we always want to find a hinge, right? Remember? So how to find a hinge? Just put whatever inside the modulus bar to become 0. So x minus 2 is equal to 0. So x is equivalent to 2. So this is our hinge. And as we know, how to draw the modulus graph is always at a V-shape. So the hinge is x is equal to 2, and we have something like this, right? So this is the rough idea of our graph. So if we put into the more analysis details, this is what our one by bit by bit point. So we know that we are going to plot a graph that's starting from negative 2 to 4 for the x value. And as usual, we just need to plot in, choose the value that we want. So what if now I choose every single x that in the traces, I just plug it into our x value here, just as shown in here. So what can we see is, we realize that whatever before the hinge, because we know the hinge is at, at x equal to 2, right? So if we look at this one. So when we are at the hinge, before the hinge is all the negative things that have been converted to become positive. Meanwhile, after the hinge, it's just a normal thing. So eventually they tell us that before the hinge, all of the value have been reflected to become positive. So before the hinge, we say that it's reflected. Meanwhile, after the hinge is just the original equations. So this obviously showing us that this kind of modulus graph, we always have two scenario. When we always think of 
when something is reflected, the third side is a something negative, and something just the original maintain the same thing is just a positive. So whenever we have an unknown inside a modulus functions, we always need to think of two scenario. What if it's a negative? What if that thing is a positive? So what do I mean? It means that when we want to get rid of the modulus sign, we can open up it by using two scenario. First, we assume it's a negative. That's why we put a negative sign in front of the functions. Meanwhile, if I assume that it's a positive, I put a plus sign in front of the functions. So if I just expand it again, I have two minus X and X minus two. And as usual, we know this one have a graph of Y is equal to negative X plus two, I have a negative gradient. So a negative gradient is going down. Meanwhile, this is a positive gradient going up. This hinge is going to be at two. So this is how we get our V shape. So now we put everything into the table form and those pairing are the coordinate of the graph. And what do we realize is, we know that whatever before the hinge, like this one, this is the inequality of showing that whatever before the hinge, because if we do this math, we will have x is below two. So this is indicate that this is before the hinge, which is left to the hinge, and this is after the hinge. And we know, whatever before the hinge will be reflected in the x-axis. That's why we put this one, assume that it's a negative portion of it. Meanwhile, whatever to the right-hand side of the hinge, we, we have considered that is a normal one. This one is the normal one. So that's why we have two equations. So this is the graph of the modulus functions. I mentioned before, this is the hinge. So this one is at the left-hand side or before the hinge, is going to be reflected in the x-axis. So that's why it's a negative portion of it. Negative x minus two. If we expand it, it become negative x plus two, which is equivalent to two minus x. So as we know, this portion is two minus x and whatever to the right-hand side of the hinge is just a normal function. So this one behave just like x minus two. So modulus functions always have two portion of the graph we make it to become a piece. So just a recap now, as we mentioned a few times already, first thing we need to know where is the hinge. So for this case, X is equal to two is the hinge. And whatever before the hinge is going to be reflected in the X axis. So this is why we have the new equations here, minus X plus two. And whatever after the hinge is going to maintain the same functions, which is X minus two. And that's all for absolute value functions. Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.